Hello, everyone. We are the Bundist Vanguard Circle of the Jewish Bundist, Jewish Socialist Bund, which is to be found at the website Jewish Socialist Bund with hyphens.net. So we have uh, an important uh, contribution to make to, you, to your attention and to the uh, Palestinian Solidarity Movement for the sake of its uh, strategic orientations, because there are problems which are not yet considered to be problems, and that is the problem. So, you know, recently in France in particular, you know, there's an academic by the name of Shlomo Sands, an Israeli, who first comes out with a book saying that he's resigned from the Jewish people as if the Jewish people didn't exist and as if he could resign from something that didn't exist. <laughs> that was his thesis, basically. And now he's come out with another book uh, uh, about uh, how the Jewish people was invented by the Zionist movement, which is a Zionist, uh, you know, position. <laughs> you know, he claims to be anti-Zionist, but he's basically putting forward a Zionist position, claiming it to be an anti-Zionist critique. I find it all quite pathetic. I would here and now denounce this uh, Professor Shlomo Sand for doing so. And uh, to deny the Jewish identity is not uh, a, a rejection of Zionism. It is a rejection of a national identity, any national identity correspondingly could be denied, you know, simply because of the um, subjective prejudices of uh, any one given person who would care to uh, deny the existence of a national culture, which knows of itself and knows itself to be such since uh, a few thousand years. So for Shlomo Sands, you know, to do that, you know, is really a disservice to the Palestinian people because he's presenting an argument that is not sustainable and easily defeated by the Zionists themselves, who would then claim to be representative of the Jewish national identity, which is not the case because the Jewish Bund exists to speak in the name and as the vanguard of the Jewish people and Jewish working class in particular, in spite of the fact that most of the Jewish working class was destroyed by the Nazis. But nonetheless, the Jewish Bund exists to deny that uh, Jewish identity can be represented by the Zionists, who are basically uh, a form of uh, assimilation by way of uh, Protestant, you know, doctrine, which claims that the Jewish belong in uh, this, a state called Israel, which is was actually originally Canaan and which is now Palestine, and that the Jewish people correspondingly do not have a place in the Christian nation states of the Occident. And yet Zionism goes along with all of that. So that's the first uh, problem I wanted to mention to you, Mark. And uh, then I noticed certain trends in this populist, the populist, you know, expansion of the uh, protest movement against the genocide in Gaza. And I saw one demonstration, I think you mentioned you saw it as well, that was chanting USA, USA, and then they switched to USA as if it was um, the Jewish people that control the United States of America, and that it's Israel's uh, fault that the genocide is con continuing because the United States, you know, doesn't have the means or the will to uh, oppose uh, the Zionist state of Israel. And yet, the <laughs> United States needs no uh, encouragement to support genocide in Palestine or anywhere, and has been doing so as has any uh, of the previous uh, Occidental empires, the British and the German, etc., The French, of course, all rich and settle maniacs. You know, France is getting kicked out of Africa. The United States is getting kicked out of the Congo. So, you know, this is all being reversed now. But in Palestine, it is Hamas uh, that has made the offensive to defeat the Zionist military. But the, the problem is that when, uh, you know, the solidarity activists, you know, are chanting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, and to Palestine alone. I saw one demonstration in which a guy very vociferously was chanting, you know, Palestine for Palestinians alone, as if, you know, the the uh, 
uh, Jewish people in Palestine are supposed to go somewhere. It's not like Algeria, you know, where the the French colonials, you know, just went back to France. You know, this is not the same situation at all. So, you know, what we have here is um, a segment of the Jewish people claiming to be exercising their national self-determination by denying the very same right to another people, which is uh, unbearable and unsustainable. So that's the second sort of, you know, problem that I've noticed. And uh, the fact that uh, so many of the Jewish oppositionists, you know, in, in the protest movement in solidarity with Palestine, you know, speak out, you know, they say not in our name, they use the preposition our, but they're just speaking as individuals, you know, they're not, well, there is a Jewish voice for peace and not in our name, and if not now, that are organizations, but they're not organizations that are speaking on behalf of the Jewish people as a whole. This I find a problem as well. And uh, it's necessary to take the Bund's position uh, that uh, there is a Jewish nation that needs its national liberation and it is, should be represented by the Jewish Bund because uh, only a, a socialist national liberation project would work. The Zionist uh, national liberation project has not worked and has put a lot of Jewish people in peril and has discredited the character of the Jewish uh, Jewish identity as well. And so it's likely leading to more anti-Semitism and not less. So these are the problems, you know, that I've noticed. And uh, I would um, ask for you, for your uh, evaluation of, of, of my perception there and whether or not uh, I'm seeing things as they are or am I just a, a bit too worried? No, I think you're... Uh, you're you, you're very clear sighted as uh, as as always, but um, my concern is um, is the story that's come out in, in the last few days that there is no timeline on when the uh, war or terrorist campaign in Gaza will end, and um, and you know and and the fact that the 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 peace the truce proposal originally came from from the Zionist entity, but then when Hamas accepted it all of a sudden the zionist entity turned around and rejected it and uh and and is now making making uh Hamas seem like uh it, it it has caused the problem and um and and so i i i i guess i feel very pessimistic right right now when i look at the at the, at the situation going going on in in west asia and i i I, you know, and, and the fact that um, there is a, a very real possibility that Hamas, rather that Israel, might uh, uh, begin a, a very intensive war against uh, Lebanon, which of course it's done before, and then the war might expand beyond. Then, obviously, the Zionist entity has alienated Egypt, um, violated you know, Netanyahu has violated the the Camp David Accords by actually crossing over from Asia into Africa into Egypt and uh and you know in, in Rafa uh, trying to um make sure that the that the Gazans in Rafa couldn't get out I, I assume um trying to exterminate them and, and there really is no clear idea on where that will lead and 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 so my my concern right now I guess is still primarily for for the Gazans, because I mean, I'm, they're the ones who are literally caught in the middle of this whole thing right now, mm -hmm. and uh, and nobody seems to have any any idea of how to rescue mm -hmm. them. And if any country had the power to do it, it would be the country that I am unfortunately <laughs> a citizen of, the United States. And I I, I, I say that sincerely. I've always apologized to people. Mm -hmm. When I say I'm I'm an American because I'm I've been so ashamed of the conduct of my country around the world, and the fact that uh, and and now we have a a president Biden uh, who repeatedly pronounces that he is a, a Zionist, mm -hmm. and then if and then if uh, former President Trump is reelected, which is a possibility, it becomes l less of a possibility every day it seems, but his ratings in the polls are going down but still still a possibility 
even with his felony conviction, that he could become president again. Um, he has said that he would do even more, even more for the Zionist entity than, mm. than, than Biden is doing. And, and so I feel like, you know, the, the main concern for me right now is Gaza. To me, every all these other things obviously are problems as well, but um, one of the main reasons I think why why there is so much animus toward Jews, and I don't feel it here because I'm I'm in such an isolated part of the U.S. right along the Mexican border. But I just what I read and what I hear from from friends of mine, it's because of what Biden is doing. It's because of what Israel is doing. It's because of what Netanyahu is doing. And I rem remember a conversation I had with this um, this Korean guy about maybe 10 years ago. Um, he um, spoke to me and he simply assumed without knowing me that I was a Zionist. And I said, what makes you think I'm a Zionist? I'm not a Zionist. And he had this surprised look on his face. <laughs> he he simply assumed that that all people of Jewish ancestry were were Zionists. And that's the and, Zionist um, line, you know. So he's accepting Zionism by assuming that you're a Zionist. Yes, that's the uh, the, the new anti-Semitism, which basically you know conflates anti-Semitism with with anti-Zionism, and and so he 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 found it inexplicable how I could possibly feel the way I did. And um, then, he, then he didn't know what to say. And he, he walked away. <laughs> he, he simply walked away. Too much to take. He doesn't want to upset his uh, balance. Well, I, of I think I upset him. I, because I think he, he himself was a very strong Zionist. And, uh, and, and I made it clear to him that I was pro-Palestinian. Uh-huh. And uh, he 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 said nothing, uh -huh. nothing. His English was not that good, but he, he was okay. He could have responded mm -hmm. to me, but he said nothing. He just mm -hmm. he just he just sat there with that. <laughs> and as I was trying to explain my views to him, and um, mm -hmm. and and because I I've always been an, an indigenous, universally an indigenous. Not not only in Palestine, but in the United States, in New Zealand, and in Australia, in Canada, everywhere. Yeah. And um, I I I mean, base. I mean, Israel is literally stolen land from yeah. the, the Palestinians, and not to say that Jews cannot live there, but to me, if they live there, it should be by asking permission. By getting into a dialogue with the Palestinians in a humble way, mm -hmm. in a humble way, and saying, "Would you, would you mind, my my dear friend, if 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 we if we stay if we stay in your land or we move into your land, and approaching it in that way rather than going in with tanks, mm -hmm. flattening homes, blowing up a hotel, mm -hmm. killing people." exiling those who were not killed mm -hmm. to the Palestinian mm -hmm. territories. Mm -hmm. That's why there is so much anti-Semitism right now, because a lot of people assume that that all Jews accept what Netanyahu is doing. Yeah. Well, the Zionists uh, claim that uh, most Jews, they still use that phrase, most Jews support Israel unconditionally. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, well, I don't know what the percent what the percentage is. I, I know certainly less in the U.S. and Canada than in Israel, but I, I don't know what the what the percentages are um, precisely. Certainly, a much higher percentage of 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 Jews, maybe almost a hundred percent, but sure not completely, of Jews in Israel uh, are are Zionist. Some people just live there because they were born there. Yeah. Like I mean. It, if I were not born in this country, I would I would never even step foot here, hmm. because to me, what the United States is doing in Camp Gitmo in Guantanamo Bay hmm. is is comparable to what the Zionist entity is doing in Palestine. Hmm. Um, you, you have innocent people, innocent men, they're all men, hmm. being kept 
in a prison camp in Cuba, hmm. in stolen land in Cuba. Mm -hmm. They will never be charged with anything. Mm -hmm. They were simply reported by by Afghan people who were trying to avoid being arrested themselves. They said, no, no, arrest that person over there. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the American troops arrested them. Mm -hmm. There was no evidence against them. So in a sense, what, what my, my country is doing is comparable to what Israel is doing. It's, it's pure imperialism. Mm -hmm pure imperialism and but the situation with 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 gitmo i don't know what i can do about that i know that president obama said that he would release all of them by the by the end of his term never mm -hmm. did it never even tried mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, in our last uh, here and now video stream uh ahmed of palestine described how he was tortured in uh, prison yeah when he was in prison, when he was young. Yes. I had some students, uh, two students, who served as uh, as guards and at Camp Gitmo. Huh. And um, uh, wow. I, I, after class, I asked them, I said, what, what, what did you do when you were guards? And they said, yeah. oh, we can't, we can't say that. We can't report on what we, on what we did. And I said, yeah. why not? I said, well, we were told that it was secret, and we are not free to discuss that subject. Well, that uh, basically told me what, what I wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah, this is like uh, my uh, my cousin by marriage in Toronto, who was uh, a soldier, who thought that I had been in the wrong place, and that it was my fault that I got hit by a rubber bullet when I was demonstrating <laughs> and taking video at the Ofer prison in, in Palestine. And so I asked her if she had been a a soldier herself because she was talking like a soldier you know so she had been a soldier she had done her service even though she was anti-war supposedly and so i asked her what she had done and the reply that the soldiers are told to say you know uh, in general is that they were only folding parachutes <laughs> <laughs> this is the standard reply oh yeah yeah that's all i did you know like, nothing more than that you know, nothing more than that's happening. We're all folding parachutes. You know, this is the, the big thing for three years. <laughs> mm. Oh, well. Yeah, it's terrible. But, uh, you know, so many people think that uh, because there's a mass movement, you know, that really wants to liberate Palestine, that it's going to happen. And that's... You know, people are chanting, you know, like soon and in our lifetime and stuff like that. But they have no program. They have no constitutional proposition. They have no conception of what to do with the Jewish Israelis. They have no idea what they're doing. They're just protesting genocide. Okay, fine. But, you know, like, what do you do to, you know, stop the genocide from happening again and again? And what do you do with all the people there? You know, so a lot of them, especially the ex CPRs, talk about a one state solution. You know, and then everybody is supposed to have, you know, an equal vote and equality. And then, you know, and then they just, you know, vote to s solve the problem. <laughs> you know, this is such a liberal, you know, like cop out because, you know, the populations are about evenly divided, you know, so there's like 7.2 million Jewish Israelis. 7.2, maybe 3 million Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Okay, so if they're all supposed to have an equal vote, <laughs> you know, <laughs> really, you know, so majority plus one is going to decide, you know, whether the Palestinian refugees can return? <laughs> I doubt it. You know, the Jewish Israelis are not going to allow anything like that to happen because they've got the power. They're not going to let go of the power. I mean... You know, the only thing that the international peacekeeping force can do, as proposed by China, is to separate, you know, the uh, Zionist military from Hamas and stop the the ongoing carnage in Gaza. Uh, but otherwise, there has to be, you know, much more thought put into uh, a solution to this, to this conflict, because uh, what has been proposed so far, two-state solution, okay, start with that, you know, sure, yeah, why not? But it's not a solution, one. 
two. Uh, one state solution is not a solution either. You know, no state is a solution to this conflict because this really touches upon the problematic, you know, related to national identity. Here we have two national identities, each striving for the national self-determination and sovereignty, each striving to do so in the same territory, and each having an equal number of people in place, you know, backing up their claims. You know, really unprecedented, very complicated situation. That's why I wrote my book when I was in Nablus, Palestine, for the Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations. Because you have to have a constitutional proposal that is not status, non-state solution is what it is. And uh, you have to recognize that both national entities exist, each having their own national self-determination, but not by negating the national self-determination of the other. And that can be done using the Bundes principle of the national cultural autonomy. Each has their own governments and institutions and civil society. And they don't bother the other. You know, it's possible. And now the book is being translated again into Arabic in Algeria. And it's already circulated in Arabic from Jordan. So you know, that's what I'm going to be working on when I go back to Palestine is promoting that strategic approach because it's really lacking. Yeah. I hope that happens, but even so-called moderates in Israel are not moderates by the standard of any other country. Mm. Want is, is not is not not a moderate. I mean, I mean, they're I mean, they're all like extraordinarily. I, well, I'll go ahead and use the word fascist, mm. fascistic, maybe even better than fascist, mm. fascistic, and um, you know, and so. Even if, I mean, even the the Labour Party is, is Zionist. Mm. They have no power right now. But there's, if, if they were in power, I don't don't know if this war would have happened. But they, but the status quo would would have stayed the same. Mm -hmm. And um, and 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 there are non anti Zionist parties in Israel, but they have no power at all. Uh, I don't even know why those people stay in Israel. Hmm. Uh, how can you be an anti-Zionist and 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 live in a place that is 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 committed to destroying, to committing genocide against an entire population of human beings? I couldn't. With also the threat of a civil war, with the you know the right-wing Zionists, you know, threatening to uh, to uh, to kill all the uh, what they call the Democrats and the leftists, who are calling for an end to the occupation and recognition of a Palestine state. You know, once uh, that starts to uh, gain some momentum, the the, the right-wing Zionists are going to attack uh, anybody who's going to be opposing that. That could be a civil war. Yeah. I think, I think that's the reason why there's that uh, ridiculous uh, campaign of arresting people who like postings on X or Twitter. Um, anybody that likes a posting that woman, I, a, hor a horrible situation that was caught by TV cameras, that woman who was blindfolded, uh -huh. her hands tied behind her back because she liked to post on X. Huh. Oh, wow. Yes, I read about that, but I didn't see any photo. I saw well, I had I, I had an English it. student in Nablus who wrote a comment in Facebook at five o'clock after a, a student was killed at his high school saying that they, he expected some retaliation. And then at one o'clock in the morning, you know, he had 12 soldiers come and take him away. And and I was in court there, you know, and they treated him, you know, like, like without any rights at all. And so he's, uh, he was sentenced to three years in prison for that comment in Facebook. Hmm. Yeah. And, you know, when the Zionist entity claims to be the only democracy in, in West Asia or Mm. Greater West Asia, I should say, including Egypt mm. or, or the Middle East, and um, I mean it's it, it's about as far from being a democracy as the United States is. <laughs> mm. And argue, I mean, even the United States could not legitimately claim to to be a democracy until the Voting Rights Act was passed, mm -hmm. and and so then you know after Johnson did that, I remember him doing it. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, the people began saying, well, now we have a true democracy. And my feeling was, even even though I was young, I said, well, let's see what happens. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing. 
And so then back in early 1970s, I spent, I, I used to spend summers in, in, in South Carolina doing civil rights work back at that time mm. when I was part of the, of the new left beginning in 68 and 69. Which part of the new left? Students what, Democratic what? Coalition. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, that, that was the organization that our chapter was was affiliated with. And uh, so there, there was a guy named Jack. Uh, his wife was Hattie. This was in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Um, Jack was a really upfront, nice guy. Um, African-American, wife African-American. Uh, but people would always warn Jack. Jack, every, everyone knew him. Police not a good thing, but everyone knew him. Uh, and they would say, Jack, you, you can't behave the way you do. Jack would treat everyone the same way. Uh, I That's why I like Jack, because Jack treated me like everyone else did that I knew. Um, but that was dangerous at that time in South Carolina. And so Jack loved high school basketball. Mm-hmm. And one day he, he used to show up to these games early. So we got to this game early, and um, he got there early, and um, a deputy sheriff walked up to him and said, Jack, I want your seat. And um, and Jack said, no, it's my seat. I got here early to get this seat. Go find your own seat. Mm-hmm. And the, sh- the deputy sheriff repeated what he said again. Jack once again declined. The deputy put his gun to Jack's head, pulled the trigger, and that, w- and that was the that was the end of Jack. The deputy was put in jail for mm-hmm. one night, released the following morning. Mm-hmm. No charges were pressed by the DA. That was that was the end of it. Wow. And and there was nothing. Had he protested? Um, I said, Hattie, is there anything I can do? And she said, no, I've tried everything. And I went back again and their house was boarded up. I have no idea where Hattie went, but I don't blame her. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to stay there either after that. Mm-hmm. She had relatives all over South Carolina. So I assume she moved someplace else. Mm-hmm. But um, so I, at that point I realized, yeah, mm-hmm. what Johnson did, Maybe he was sincere. He worked with Martin Luther King Jr. Didn't work. Mm. We we are not a democracy in this country. Yeah. And now now the United States is even worse. Mm-hmm. Even worse than it was back then. Mm. And so it, and, and so people who claim that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East or Greater West Asia. I feel like saying profanity. I, I, won't, I won't say profanity. But um, their head up their butts, um, and yeah, the demonstrators are calling for an election and they refuse. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. We don't have uh, more than a minute or so left in this podcast, so uh, thanking you for your interventions. Sure. And I'm glad that Pleasure. we're able to get these questions out into the open, and uh, we encourage uh, comments. Uh, from people who uh, who would even disagree with what we have to say. And please so. join us. Please join us. If you agree with us, then make, make your agreement known. Don't yes. just sit back. Yes. You know, do, some, do something to help us, or if not help us, help the Gazans, help the, the Palestinians yes. in some way. Jewish Bundes you Unite. Know. We have to speak up on behalf of the Jewish people as a whole. Mm-hmm. Not just on our own behalf, not just on behalf of some group. We have to speak on behalf of the entire Jewish people now in opposition to Zionism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Until next Friday. Get Shabbos. Friday or Wednesday? Friday. Let's make it Friday. Friday's Friday, Shabbos yeah. session, you know? Okay. Good. Because okay. Shabbos is Shabbos after all, you know? <laughs> That's good. Okay.